Lesson 7-4 is on similarity in right triangles. Take a minute to read over the learning goal and scale. Find where you are on the scale before we begin the lesson. When we draw the altitude to the hypotenuse of a right triangle, we form three similar right triangles. Let's take a look at theorem 7-3. The altitude to the hypotenuse of a right triangle divides the triangle into two triangles that are similar to the original triangle and to each other. Notice how it is much easier to match the corresponding parts when the three triangles are oriented the same way. In example one, we will identify similar triangles. Write a similarity statement relating the three triangles in the diagram. Since we know the similarity statements have to be written in corresponding order, let's start by drawing the three triangles oriented in the same way. The large triangle, triangle XYZ, we will redraw. Now let's redraw the medium right triangle, triangle YWZ. And finally, let's draw the small triangle, triangle XWY. Now that all three triangles are oriented the same way, I'm going to name mine like this. Triangle XYZ is similar to triangle YWZ is similar to triangle XWY. Pause the video and do you try number one. For part A, we will write a similarity statement relating the three triangles in the diagram. Let's begin by redrawing the triangles so that they are oriented the same way. We'll start with the large triangle, triangle QPR, then the medium triangle, triangle PSR, and the small triangle, triangle QSP. Now let's use our newly positioned triangles to write our similarity statement. Triangle QPR is similar to triangle PSR is similar to triangle QSP. In part B, we will use the similarity statement we just wrote to write two different proportions using the ratio the length of segment SR to the length of segment SP. Since segments SR and SP are the long and the short leg of the medium triangle, we want to put the other ratio as the long and the short leg of the big triangle and the long and the short leg of the small triangle. In our first proportion, let's use the big triangle and write that the length of segment SR to the length of segment SP is equal to the length of segment PR to the length of segment PQ. Now for our second proportion, let's use the long and the short leg of the small triangle, so we will write the ratio the length of segment SP to the length of segment SQ. Proportions in which the means are equal occur frequently in geometry. For any two positive numbers A and B, the geometric mean of A and B is a positive number X such that A to X equals X to B. For example 2, we will find the geometric mean. What is the geometric mean of 6 and 15? Remember, the geometric mean occurs twice in the proportion. They are the means, and then the two numbers 6 and 15 are our extremes. Let's use cross product property and multiply 6 times 15 and x times x. So 90 equals x squared. Taking the square root of both sides, the square root of 90 will equal x. Simplifying the square root of 90 would be the square root of 9 times the square root of 10. The square root of 9 is 3, so x will equal 3 times the square root of 10. Written in decimal form rounded to the nearest tenth, x would equal 9.5 approximately. Pause the video and do you try number two. What is the geometric mean of 4 and 18? Let's start with our proportion 4 to x equals x to 18, using x as our means. Now we will use cross product and multiply 4 times 18 equals equal to x times x. 72 equals x squared. We'll take the square root of both sides, and the square root of 72 will equal x. To simplify the square root of 72, we know that the square root of 72 equals the square root of 36 times the square root of 2. Since the square root of 36 is 6, 6 radical 2 will equal x. 
or in decimal form rounded to the nearest tenth, x is approximately 8.5. In part B of U try 1, we used a pair of similar triangles to write a proportion with a geometric mean. We used the small triangle and the medium triangle to write the proportion the length of segment SQ to the length of segment SP is equal to the length of segment SP to the length of segment SR. Notice we are comparing the short leg to the long leg of the small triangle and having that equal the short leg to the long leg of the medium triangle. Notice that the length of segment SP are the means in this proportion. So the length of segment SP is the geometric mean of the length of segment SQ and the length of segment SR. This proportion illustrates two corollaries of theorem 7-3, the fact that the altitude from the right angle to the hypotenuse of a right triangle divides the triangle into two right triangles that are similar to the original triangle and to each other. Let's take a look at corollary 1 to theorem 7-3. The length of the altitude to the hypotenuse of a right triangle is the geometric mean of the lengths of the segments of the hypotenuse. This corollary gives us a way to rewrite proportions without having to redraw the similar triangles. So notice the length of side 1 to A. So here's side 1 to A would be equal to A to the length of side 2. Notice that when A is the geometric mean, the two extremes will be the segments of the hypotenuse, S1 and S2. Corollary 2 to theorem 7-3 says that the altitude to the hypotenuse of a right triangle separates the hypotenuse so that the length of each leg of the triangle is the geometric mean of the length of the hypotenuse and the length of the segment of the hypotenuse adjacent to the leg. So what that means is the length here, this leg 1, is the geometric mean of the entire hypotenuse H and the segment adjacent to leg 1, S1. Okay, so in this proportion, H, the whole hypotenuse, to leg 1 is equal to leg 1 to S1. Also, the second leg, leg 2, I would write the whole hypotenuse to leg 2 is equal to leg 2 to S2. In example 3, we will use the corollaries. What are the values of X and Y? Let's start with X. Since X is a leg, we know it is the geometric mean of the entire hypotenuse, 4 plus 12, or 16, and the segment of the hypotenuse that is adjacent to the leg X, 4. Now we will use cross products to find the value of x. 6 times 4 equals x times x. Sorry, 16 times 4. So 64 will equal x squared. Take the square root of both sides and the square root of 64 will equal x. Since the square root of 64 is 8, 8 equals x. Since y is the altitude, we know that y is the geometric mean of both segments of the hypotenuse 4 and 12. Let's use cross products property, so 4 times 12 will equal y times y. 48 will equal y squared. Taking the square root of both sides, the square root of 48 will equal y. To simplify the square root of 48, we know that the square root of 48 is the square root of 16 times the square root of 3. Since the square root of 16 is 4, y will equal 4 times the square root of 3 which is approximately 6.9 when rounded to the nearest tenth. Pause the video and do you try number three. What are the values of x and y? Since x is a leg, we know that x will be the geometric mean of the entire hypotenuse 4 plus 5, or 9, and the segment of the hypotenuse adjacent to the leg, 4. Using cross products, 9 times 4 will equal x times x. 36 equals x squared. Taking the square root of both sides, the square root of 36 will equal x. Since the square root of 36 is 6, x equals 6. Since y is the altitude, we know it is the geometric mean of the two segments of the hypotenuse, 4 and 5. Using cross products, 4 times 5 will equal y times y. So 20 equals y squared. Taking the square root of both sides, the square root of 20 will equal y. 
to simplify the square root of 20, we know that the square root of 4 times the square root of 5 equals the square root of 20. Since 2 is the square root of 4, 2 times the square root of 5 equals y, or approximately 4.5 when rounded to the nearest tenth. In example 4, we will find a distance. You are preparing for a robotics competition using the setup shown below. Points A, B, and C are located so that the length of segment AB is 20 inches and that segment AB is perpendicular to segment BC. Point D is located on segment AC so that segment BD is perpendicular to segment AC and segment DC is 9 inches. You program your robot to move from point A to point D to pick up the plastic bottle at point D. How far does the robot travel from point A to point D? Since we don't know the length of the altitude, but we do know the length of one of the legs, let's use this leg, BA, as the geometric mean of the entire hypotenuse, x plus 9, and x, the part of the segment adjacent to segment BA. Using cross products, x plus 9 times x will equal 20 times 20. Using distributive property, x squared plus 9x will equal 400. We're going to have to factor, so let's move 400 to the left by subtracting it from both sides and setting our equation equal to 0. Remember, when factoring a quadratic, we want factors of c, or negative 400, that have a sum of positive 9. So we will use negative 16 and positive 25. To solve for x, we will set each factor equal to 0, add 16 to both sides, and x will equal 16, subtract 25 from both sides, and x will equal negative 25. Remember, since we cannot have a negative distance, the length between segment point A and point D will be 16 inches. Pause the video and do you try number 4. From point D, the robot must turn right and move to put point B to put the bottle in the recycling bin. How far does the robot travel from point D to point B? Since we know that X equals 16 inches and that segment BD is the altitude, we can use segment BD as the geometric mean of segment DC and segment DA. Let's use 16 as the length of segment DA. Use cross products. So 9 times 16 will equal the length of segment BD times the length of segment BD. 144 will equal the length of segment BD squared. We'll take the square root of both sides and the square root of 144 will equal the length of segment BD. Since the square root of 144 is 12, the length of segment BD is 12. So the length of segment BD is 12 inches. Now's your chance to see how well you understand the lesson. Pause the video and do the lesson check. Don't forget to check your answers on the next slide. If you have any questions regarding the lesson check, please be sure to ask me in class. Now take another minute to reread the learning goal on the scale. Have you climbed any higher on the scale after going over the lesson?